Hey everybody, welcome to this week's video. This time we're going to talk about all the mods I've done so far to my 2020 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon. We've had a lot of fun with this Jeep in the last couple of years and 33,000 miles. Most of these mods I've installed myself, uh, some I've had to shop do, but I'm not affiliated with any of these companies or reimbursed for any of the product links down below in the description. That's just for information for you. So you can know that everything I talk about here is going to be honest and from our real world experiences for products that I paid for personally. So you would probably consider this a good medium Jeep build. It's great for off-roading, for overlanding, for some mild rock crawling. And we've had just, like I said, have a lot of fun with this Jeep. So I hope you find this useful. Let's get started. So maybe one of the most important off-road mods you can do for safety first off is to install a winch on your bumper to get you out of a bad situation or to help someone else who's stuck. And this is the Warren uh, Evo VR12S synthetic rope winch. This winch uh, was uh, made in China uh, to the specifications and to Warren's design. Uh, and it is less expensive than the American made and assembled versions, the Xeon series. So take that into consideration. We found this to be uh, excellent so far. It is a 12,000 pound winch. And uh, for example, last year we used it to help recover a buddy's Jeep who got stuck on some snow on like a 30 degree slope. And we, got, we were behind him. And so we used a snatch block and free spooled the, the synthetic rope out to a tree on the hill in front of him. And then from behind him, we were able to pull him up until he could get traction. And uh, this 12,000 pound winch had no problem doing that. So that was uh, a really good thing. So let's free spool this out real quick and take a look at the uh, Factor 55 closed loop shackle. This is a really strong shackle that is not gonna be the weak point in your setup. So you would just put your soft shackle through there or a hard shackle through there for your point. And that is not gonna be the part to break. So this also has the optional rope guard, which when it's sitting on your bumper, any road debris, you come up here and it won't hit uh, the synthetic rope and damage that. So this has been uh, just a really good first investment when we were getting into off-roading and something you should probably consider for any type of winch is a good, uh, is a good winch to have, then no winch. So if your remote in this case, it comes with a wireless remote that is also wired as a backup. So if the batteries are too low on the remote, you can plug this wire into there and plug the end of the wire into the bottom of the remote and use it that way. But let's go ahead and, and uh, get this rope pulled in real quick. I'll turn off the free spool and we'll bring it back in. So I would highly re recommend getting some sort of winch setup for you on the trail. I did install this myself and you know, it is more helpful to have a second person to help you get the bumper on and off. You do have to buy a separate winch tray to fit between the frame rails to hold the winch, but uh, it was not a horrible install. I just ran the wires down here, up through the engine bay and directly to the battery. So think about a winch, it could really help you. So there's a lot of sizes and manufacturers of lifts that you can get. In our case, we went with a 3.5 inch metal cloak, true dual rate lift with the optional rock sport shocks all the way around. This has been a great lift for us. Uh, it has been great for articulation on the trail. It's been really quiet uh, on the road. It's not squeaky. It's essentially maintenance free besides making sure your, your torque specs maintain themselves and they have, nothing's come loose. Uh, there's no Zerk fittings for any of the bushings. Uh, it's lifetime on those and it's been really good. The only problem I've had would probably be due to how we have loaded out the Gladiator. I think that we, we exceeded what the springs were rated for for the three and a half inch lift and we got a bunch of sag in the back of the Jeep due to adding a smart cap, uh, a rooftop tent, an awning, a deck system, in the bed, uh, rock slide engineering step sliders with the optional armor, and then you add in all our cargo, we ended up getting some sag. Uh, and to overcome that, we decided to put in some 4.5 inch Evo rear springs and one inch spacers in the rear. And that alleviated our sag, gave us our factory rake 
back, which I like the look of personally. Um, and so that's worked out to alleviate those problems. And I would definitely recommend the, any of the metal cloak lifts, if they're anything like the true dual rate lift has otherwise performed uh, for us on and off road. It's been a good choice. If you're doing a lift as high as three and a half inches, you really want to consider, and it was recommended to us by the shop, to install a, a longer shaft here for the change in the pinion angle on your pinion gears um, and these U-joints. So uh, we went with an Adams shaft that has a nice Zerk fitting there. There is an interior Zerk fitting there, a female that's harder to reach. But this is really something that you need to do when you go, uh, we were told, when you go to at least a, a three and a half inch lift. Lower, lower lifts, maybe a two inch Mopar lift, you could probably get away without it. But do your research and uh, follow the suggestions of the professionals on this type of mod. That would be my advice. And it's worked out great for us so far. We also decided to go with some one ton tie rod ends and chromoly axle shafts to really improve the durability, reliability of the Jeep when we're out on the trail uh, to minimize the chance that we're gonna break something with the type of uh, mild rock crawling that we do. And so we're really happy with that and maybe these types of stiffening and improving the toughness of the Gladiator can help us avoid having to go to uh, one ton axles uh, at some point in the future. We may, we may gusset the Dana 44 axles that come with the Gladiator. I do like having the front axle disconnect and, and all the electronics that come with that. So we're gonna try and preserve that as much as possible with these tough components that were also installed for us by a shop. It's something you may wanna to consider to improve the reliability of your setup without having to go to a larger axle. So everybody loves big tires and wheels, right? Well, these have been great. This is the TerraFlex Nomad 17 inch wheel with the 37s for the Nitto Ridge Grapplers. Man, I love this setup. It's worked great for me. Um, so what we've got is the 17s with the 4.75 inch backspacing zero offset. Uh, literature says that these wheels will accept up to a 40 inch tire because they're hardened aluminum and that's great. One of the best features about this wheel to me for going off road is the ability to air down super fast. So there is a dump valve right here on each wheel and you can do that, open it all the way up, open that all the way up and by the time you walk around to all four tires and get back to this one, it's done airing down. It'll be, you can preset it in here. There's a, um, a hex key here and you can preset it for, in my case, usually I run about 13 pounds on each tire when I'm off road in most situations. And it's just so fast, you know, no more standing around with uh, an air gauge and doing all that stuff. So that is super fast. Uh, and then I also like the fact that the Schrader valve for the airing up is over here and that's protected behind this aluminum cap. And there's a water seal for each of, for, the, for each of the caps. And you can replace these easy enough. There's your oversized valve. So it fills up pretty quick. And I really like that about it. The Nitto Ridge Grapplers have been awesome. Um, just before I got these tires, I had the Falcon tires that came stock on the Jeep and I popped a bead on a rock going off road. I've not had that issue with these, although these are not beadlock uh, wheels. They do have a raised rib inside to help minimize the chance that when you're aired down that you're gonna pop a bead. So these have been great. Uh, I've gone off road a lot with these and have not popped a bead in rocky situations down to 13 pounds. I haven't really taken any lower, like I said. So I love this setup. These are quiet on the road. They're grippy as heck everywhere. And uh, I wouldn't hesitate to get them again. Also, bonus, the 37s do fit uh, under the bed in the Gladiator. You do have to air down about 10 pounds and squeeze it up there, but I've done it. And I'll show you a picture up here of what that looks like. Uh, the last feature to talk about with these wheels is this rash ring. Now what's great about this new version of the rash ring is that it's modular. So it comes in these six sections and if you mess up one section, you can replace it on the trail. Easy enough. And I like it has the torque spec right there for the bolt. The original version of this rash ring that came with the Nomad TerraFlex is one piece. It was much more expensive and I did have that at first, but I switched, I'm switching out to these as I wear out those one piece rings. 
and I'll insert a picture of that over here. So at the end of the day, I would highly recommend this setup for anyone. I mean, true enough, I haven't used other large aftermarket wheels and tires. This is my first experience. So you may really like your setup and there's a lot of good setups out there, but for me, this has been great. So I did end up re-gearing the Gladiator to go with the bigger wheels and tires. I went with a 513 setup. For me, that's been great. Been able to keep 75 on the highway in eighth gear without a problem with all the weight of these mods on the Jeep. And I had him throw some heavy duty diff covers on that. I had the re-gear done by Bull Run 4x4 and Haymarket again, and uh, been really happy with that. So it's been a great setup for me. Another crucial mod for the Jeep Gladiator was the ZL mode of Taser Mini. And this I used to reprogram the transmission for that 513 gear change that I did. And also uh, for the you know, different wheel size, you can calibrate that for the speedometer so that, that remains accurate. So for the transmission shift points with the re-gear and also for your wheel size changes. Now there's a ton of other mods and tweaks you can do to your Jeep Gladiator's electrical system, uh, controlling the lights, uh, disabling the auto start stop feature. Uh, there's lots of videos on YouTube about that and I won't get into all that here, but that has been uh, really well worth the money. So I'm very happy with that. So useful. Okay, I admit, now we're getting spoiled. I'll blame this one on my wife. The Rockslide Engineering Step Sliders. I have really liked these. I did go for the optional armor on the set too. These are super heavy duty. I did install these myself. Uh, it wasn't all that bad. Running the wires is probably the most tedious part. But, uh, and I did not go for the optional lights for um, the steps. I think this has just worked out fine for me. I've had them on rocks. It's held up flawlessly. All I've done is just to make sure that I have kept these lubricated. Um, rock slide, if you search on YouTube, they, you know, recommend a silicone spray for this. And there's several points that you keep lubed. So after a day on the trails, I will definitely, you know, come home, wash this, re-lubricate it. And you know, I haven't had a problem. They've been great. And uh, that's really helped my wife get in and out of the Jeep. And they're worth looking into. These have gotten a little more pricey, especially since COVID. Um, but if you want this luxury, that's fine. A lot of people, you know, would just be just as fine with, uh, any type of you know non-functional step system but uh, yeah okay we splurged an important feature of the rockside engineering step sliders for off-road use is there is a kill switch inside so you can turn off the uh, sliders when you open the door on a trail so you don't come down on a rock or something or if you're on a rock um, you you know won't put the step out I'll insert a picture of that little switch right up here and mine is located uh, down at the driver's side footwell next let's talk about the rsi smart cap i mean by you know next to the lift and the wheels obviously this is the biggest functional change i made to the jeep because of what it allows me to do with keeping cargo dry and secure and i chose a steel cap like this as opposed to some uh, fiberglass competitors because I didn't want any body flex on the trail to potentially crack a corner or anything like that. Plus, this is modular, so all um, one, two, three, four, five sections can be replaced if something's damaged on the trail. And it comes in a kit. I'll, I'll insert a couple pics of what the kit looked like when it was finally delivered from RSI uh, over here. It did take couple hours for my daughter and I to put it together then a friend helped us uh, put it on the Jeep no leaks no fitment issues for me it's it's been great and just just a super bonus is that the white that this came in is a really good match for the factory white on the Jeep this is the Evo C so it's a it's called a contractor cap and it comes in that's why it came in white and I took a gamble and I think that the paint match worked out pretty well 
So I, you know, maybe one criticism uh, or critique of the cap is I don't like the separate locking system. I would much prefer to have a single locking mechanism rather than have to do both sides like that all the time. That's not super convenient. Um, but otherwise, uh, you know, it's been really solid. And let's go over some other features. So I did order the table accessory for the Evo C Smart Cap. Let's see how that comes out. So there's your stainless steel table and you can just set that up anywhere you are. We really like it so far. And it locks back into place just like that. Sometimes getting up on there with a the lift isn't so fun. Obviously having the locking doors is nice all around. Reaching in for your gear, reaching in for tables is super easy. And then on the driver's side, I went with a storage box. It has mall panels in it. And uh, we're gonna be using this for our outside kitchen setup. I will be doing a separate video about my overlanding setup with my rooftop tent and my Evo um, 270 awning, which goes on this side. And uh, it's gonna be a great setup for that. Up top, we went with the RSI load bars for their smart cap. And these have been pretty good. Uh, I will post the weight limits for both static load and driving load down in the corner here. I do put my rooftop tent on this and I also mount my <clears throat> OVS uh, 270 awning on the side over here above where we will have our camp kitchen on that side door. Overall, very pleased. There is a positive pressure vent in the back there so that when you're driving, uh, it pushes air into there and forces uh, dust and other air out to create positive pressure inside the cap. So the cap has been dry. It's been relatively clean, dust-free, and dusty situations so far. And overall, we're really happy with it. So you saw before, let's talk about the deck system. So uh, this has been really good for keeping things organized and keeping things separated. You got a big drawer on this side and a smaller drawer on this side. They both go pretty much all the way back to the end of the bed. You're supposed to be able to put 3,500 pounds on the deck here, so if you wanted to put like a motorcycle or something up here, um, that would be a great thing. Now, obviously, you do lose this height here. There are uh, what they call ammo boxes on both sides, and they open up, and I keep recovery gear on these sides, on both sides, so I can get to those easy enough. And I really like it so far. Um, I really like being able to keep things separated and then still have full use of this without all my tools flying around all, all over the place. So that's been pretty good. Let's take a look at the setup. I'll see my chainsaw. Um, Jacking stuff up, hammers, various tools. Get my air stuff over here. Got my bags of tools uh, separated and labeled so I can find stuff easy enough. There's more storage in the front. There's removable trays. There's removable lock boxes for, for both of these things, but I haven't found those to be useful. It's just another thing to open up, uh, provide, preventing quick access to the tools. I installed it myself in a few hours. It wasn't a big deal. And uh, it can come out easy enough if you need to take it out. I like it. It does add weight though. And 
the weight between this and the cap and the rock slide engineering steps and the wheels and tires, the lift. That is why I had the sag with the metal cloak rear springs. But right now I really like the setup. So the last big mod would be the ARB dual air compressor. I opted to install this under the passenger seat so I could keep it dry and away from anything else, dust, dirt, and the engine compartment. I did install this myself. I'm not gonna lie, kind of a pain in the butt, running the wires. Uh, you do run the wires through um, the hole in the floor with the grommet, rubber grommet, um, and then run along the, the frame rails and up into the engine bay to the battery. Sounds easier than it was. Um, but it is, you know, working out really great so far. So let's plug it in and see how this works. Uh, I did opt to go to an auxiliary switch um, using the purple wire for auxiliary switch four. And she powers up. Pressure's up. And we're ready to go. So this is essential. This is essential. If you're doing a lot of off-roading, obviously, you know, there's lots of ways to do it. I do have a backup compressor that I use to go right to the battery terminals. Um, and sometimes I'll do both just to, to air up even quicker. But this airs up really quick with the dual ARB and keeping pressure. And I've been really happy with it. So let's go ahead and depressurize. Turn off the switch. Run the air out of the lines. And we're good to go. That simple. So let's walk around and look at all the little mods I've done to the Jeep that have made a little bit of a difference. This AVS bug deflector, it has, uh, you know, I mainly got it to keep rock chips off of here. I've got 30,000 miles, uh, 33,000 miles on the Gladiator, and I haven't had any of the infamous rock chips up on the windshield yet or cracks. I can't say that, that that's the factor. That made the difference for sure, but maybe it has. Uh, got rid of the factory antenna with that little stubby. On the inside, just a couple small things. The grab bar storage bin has been helpful. Uh, my wife gave me these colored uh, aluminum knob covers for Christmas, which was kind of neat. I And then this extra storage tray for both sides of the console. It connects on both sides. That's been helpful. And uh, I just installed uh, the bullet point mount system for my phone and camera. And really haven't got a chance to use it out on the trail yet, but uh, looking forward to that. So those are some of the little things that I've done. In the future mod category, I will be replacing the spent Maximus 3 tow loop that I installed with heavy duty shackle tab kit that mounts directly to the frame horns there and goes like that. Mounts over the fog light, gets rid of that plastic and it is super heavy duty. There's a separate video coming on that. All right, all right, you guys have waited long enough. It's time to add all this up and figure out how much we spent. So the mods came to a total of 23,980.25. Oh. But how much did the Jeep cost us? That's a really important factor here. We got a killer deal, $47,500 buying the Jeep used, giving us a grand total of a whopping $71,480.25. That is a lot of money. But, you know, buying the Jeep used was a really important factor here. Plus, we use this Jeep for so many different things and plan to do a lot of new things with it in the future. So when you figure that a brand new Jeep stock 
uh, Gladiator Rubicon, with everything that we have into this one, would cost at least $70,000. Not such a bad deal. So there you have it. Not cheap by any means. Hey, if you've made it this far in the video, thanks for sticking around. In the future, we have plans to start towing our cargo trailer camper conversion that we've been working on. There'll be some videos about that. And uh, I'll show you my overlanding setup. So the next two videos would be overlanding setup and my tab shackle upgrade. So we'll see you guys around. Thanks for checking in.